The problem with trying to predict who's going to win the Stanley Cup is that you're going to be wrong much more often than you're going to be right. I mean, if I just spent my time, say, giving you a reason why each team wasn't going to win the Stanley Cup, well, at least I'd be right 31 times and only wrong once. Huh. It's not a bad idea. We're now just a week away from the start of the 2021-22 NHL season, so I figured why not have a little bit of preseason fun. And please do feel free to defend your team down in the comments against whatever I have to say about them, but try not to take this too seriously and have a little bit of fun with it. Even in what looks like it's going to be a pretty terrible Pacific Division, the Ducks really don't even look like they're going to be that competitive. It really does seem like the biggest win the Coyotes are likely to have this season is the return of the Kachina jerseys. Or maybe the approval to build their new stadium so they can actually stay in Arizona. It's pretty clear that Tampa is title town now. Boston's time at the top of the sports mountain, it's over. I've gotta say, after the changes they made last year, this is one of the better looking teams in the NHL. At least when it comes to their jerseys. Beyond that, yeah, I think anything else I would say here would just feel like piling on, so we'll leave it there. I mean, they couldn't even make the playoffs last year in a week. Seven-team Canadian division. So what, just because the Pacific is bad, things are going to be different this time around? Plus, it did also seem like locker room stability was a bit of an issue last season, and losing your team captain to a division rival in an expansion draft is not likely to help that very much. I mean, come on, who really needs promising young players or to pay the guys that helped you get this franchise turned around when you can get a guy who was kicked off of his previous team for being a crazy person at a discount? Okay, yes, this team probably is going to be better on the ice this year, even with that Seth Jones contract, but off the ice, even with Buffalo and Arizona in the league, this organization looks like it's the biggest mess of any team which is probably the one thing that Flower can't save them from. They've been among the cup favorites for a few years in a row now for a reason. This is one of the most talented teams in the league. And yet, at this point, just getting to a conference finals would seem like an accomplishment, much less a cup final or win. Unless Line A suddenly turns into the second coming of Wayne Gretzky, the Blue Jackets are going to need to start shooting pucks out of that cannon if they even want to score enough points to get into the playoffs. Off the ice, things can't get much worse for the Stars than they were last season. On the ice, however, well, let's just say their most youthful goaltender is the newly added Braden Holtby. Iserman might be a wizard, but not even Dumbledore could win a Stanley Cup with that roster. Not yet. It was an interesting offseason for the Oilers as they scrambled to find answers to their playoff issues. And at least on the defensive end, Duncan Keith might be able to help them get there if this was 2011. A lot of things broke right for the Panthers last year as they had their best regular season in franchise history, and yet they still couldn't get out of the first round of the playoffs. And in that division, things aren't going to be any easier this year. Robin Leonard might be winning over a lot of people now, outside of Buffalo's front office, but after what Vegas did to Marc-Andre Fleury, after he won a Vesna with them, they don't deserve to win it. It does look like hope is on the horizon and that the future might be bright for this rising LA Kings team, but they're still at least a year away from the playoffs, even in this version of the Pacific Division. They get one season before those buyouts come back to bite them in a big way. And with the Wild, let's just say this isn't a franchise known for performing well under pressure. They had their miracle run to the finals, got tons of people excited, and built up all sorts of goodwill even if it came at the cost of Shea Weber. But then the 2021 entry draft happened. And while sure the choices that were made there might not necessarily affect them on the ice this season, what, you're gonna tell me a team that finished 18th best in the NHL last season is suddenly gonna win the cup? I don't think so. Nashville would be golden and in a perfect spot to win their first Stanley Cup if you could win a cup with only defensemen. Look, again, yes, this is another team that is getting better and getting Dougie Hamilton is definitely exciting, but come on, even getting to the playoffs is going to be asking a bit much this season. 
Are you really going to try and tell me that $18 million is the reason this team didn't win a Stanley Cup last year? Because if so, what's their excuse for 2020? Plus, when putting up points is maybe the one weakness of this team, losing your top scoring winger for free in an expansion draft definitely isn't going to help anything. Is there a good core of growing talent here? Sure, but they just spent the entire offseason getting ready to fight Tom Wilson, not win a cup. On the bright side, yeah, you could say things did look better-ish towards the end of last season, but I still think it's quite a bit of a stretch to say that this team's going to get anywhere near a Stanley Cup with Melnick as the owner. I think this one's pretty obvious. They still haven't signed Gritty to a player contract. Oh, you, you want a real reason? Well, they better hope that Hart has a big-time bounce-back season, because... Martin Jones isn't going to be there to save them, or much else if his last few seasons in San Jose are any indication. People like to say you can never count the Penguins out when they have Crosby. So what happens when he's out? Because as far as why this team isn't going to be winning a Stanley Cup this season, that would be the health of Crosby and Malkin, or the lack thereof. Last year, this was the seventh worst team at scoring points in the entire league, and now their top point scorer is public enemy number one, outside of what's happening in Chicago anyway. Meanwhile, on the other end, they're pinning all their hopes to a first-time starter who they just traded for, so should go well. Come on, expansion teams don't win Stanley Cups. They might get to the finals once or twice, but they don't win them. Plus, are we really going to talk Stanley Cup with that top six forward group? Key players wanting to be traded out and Bennington trying to play the role of enforcer from goal doesn't really seem like the recipe for a Stanley Cup run. Yes, this is still one of the better teams in the league even after they lost a number of guys that would be considered star players in a number of lineups across the league elsewhere, but nobody wins three Stanley Cups in a row in the salary cap era. So as long as they stick to that salary cap this time in the playoffs, they don't have a chance. Yeah, it might be low-hanging fruit, but how about this team focuses on winning a round in the playoffs before we start thinking about a Stanley Cup? Do you ever just follow up a really disappointing season by trading a bunch of bad contracts with one year left on them for one really bad contract with six years left on it? Well, that's what the Canucks are trying. It's a bold strategy. Guess we'll see if it works out for them. It's really starting to seem like getting Ovi that goals record has become more of a priority, which he definitely could get in, that'd be pretty cool. But it also probably means another early playoff exit. If one of the Canadian teams is going to break that nearly 30-year drought without one of them winning the Stanley Cup, do you really think it's going to be Winnipeg? Because history would say otherwise. So with that, there you go. At least one reason that none of the teams in the league are going to win the Stanley Cup this season. And if you haven't already gotten triggered on what I said about your team and commented down below, feel free to tell me why I'm wrong. Of course, I already know I'm going to be wrong because at least one of these teams is going to win the cup, but obviously that's not the point. Otherwise, if you have managed to stick around to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy or at least have fun with this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below that I would appreciate you using. Otherwise, until next time, stay safe out there and... Be good to each other.